scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Everyone created by God, doesn't matter whether we fell from whatever, the fact that we came from Him satisfies the condition to have eternal life. That's why when evangelists preach, they don't say, will you spend eternity? The question is location, not the possibility. Everyone will spend eternal life. The idea of death, as we know, is not cessation from living. It's the translation from one dimension of existence to another. And that translation comes with certain possibilities. If you are with God, then it's called life everlasting. If you are apart from him then it is called death but that does not mean you will not live again are we together the idea of what we know to be everlasting life is from the greek word zoe please i want us to understand very simple exposition but will hold the key to our victory eternal life is a kind is a quality the idea is not another life the idea is an also passing life in quality like you go to buy stuff in the market and they tell you this one is fake or generally for everyone and then they take you into another room and they say there is another one if you have the money they can bring it down so eternal life is not one of the many lives this is what you need to understand eternal life is a quality of life that has sustained within it certain possibilities that only in Christ would they manifest. Being in Christ is the secret to activating that life. It's a life pregnant with possibilities. And the nature of that life is such that the possessor of it should be like God. Are we together? So whoever by any means can have access to that life, there is an implication that that life should cause in you it should begin to produce certain effects that reflect god if by any means a plant has that life that plant will start behaving like god are we together if by any means a handkerchief possesses that life that handkerchief will begin to behave like god enshrined in that life is capacity to release all the multifaceted possibilities that are in God. It is God's own life. It's not an inferior type. So when the Bible says this is the record. That God out of his benevolence has given us Zoe. A class and a kind of life. Then the Bible says that that life is in his son. So the condition to possess that life is that you must accept the son. Outside of Jesus, there is no possibility of sustaining such a life. Now, there are other kinds of lives that you can access. You can access a life assisted by the realm of the spirit. It may not be eternal life. Are we together now? I can go to a native doctor to program a mystery in a charm and aid me to live a life that is higher than the normal human life. So I will be able to demonstrate possibilities that may not be affordable to the natural man, but it still is not eternal life. So we are not talking of any life that is above the human life. There are many kinds and quality of lives and living that are above the human life. 
but are not God's life. Are we together? When you meet a rich man, although it's all human life, because of the quality of what he or she eats and the children, their health and the possibilities that come with the kind of life would be far different from someone who eats once a week, once in two days. Are we together now? When you meet someone who um, has had access to certain drugs that can aid vitality, you would find that whether they are supplements or whatever it is, there is an advantage that those provisions create to such a person that will reflect in the quality of his life from another. So when Jesus is talking about eternal life, it's not a cadre of lives and then his own is the highest. No, no. Eternal life is a class of life incontestable and incomparable with any other. It's a class of life that reflects who God is. He programmed all the possibilities in him like a software and encapsulated it in that life so that whoever receives that life receives potentials potentials notice my choice of words receives the potentials to reflect all that are in christ and all the possibilities that are enshrined in the person now many christians come to give their lives to christ we come out for an altar call we recite all kinds of things like many will be doing shortly but very few people pastor jakes really understand that kind of life are we together and not understanding what we have received will shortchange us and for many people their idea of eternal life is we only received an escape from hell which will be useful one day so for now let's keep it and go back to our normal life at death it becomes activated that is the idea that many people have about what we call eternal life so they say are you born again they say yes what they mean is i got that thing that saves me from hell but it's somewhere hidden i will keep living my defeated life and then if for any reason death comes is the trigger i bring it out as an escape are we together now the bible says whatsoever is born of god the word born of god is if it is god that introduced the seed that gave birth to it has in it it says overcomes the world not because of the possessor but because of what is inside the possessor of that life whatsoever is born of god has capacity to overcome the world and he says this is the victory that overcomes even our faith that's something i'll be discussing shortly so eternal life is not life after death eternal life is god's life that grants a man ascendance to release the possibilities of god here and now are we together it is important that we understand this it will reflect in the quality of your life and it will reflect in everything the moment i give my life to christ brothers and sisters the bible says listen to me carefully it says that i have been called as a result of that initiation out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation and by implication out of the limitations that come with those systems are we together let me tell you something about eternal life eternal life is a fact one of the tenets of the christian faith is the fact that when a man declares the lordship of christ over his life he is a possessor of eternal life it's a fact there are many tenets what we call the pillars of the christian faith number one of them is that salvation is only through jesus christ you have to know what you believe salvation salvation is only through jesus christ the bible says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which men must be saved the first tenet of the christian faith is the exclusive authority of christ to be the only one to bring men to the father no prophet no priest no apostle no prophet 
no religion, no sect can claim to route you through another path to the Father. The Bible says, no man cometh to the Father except by me. The authorized medium to access the Father and the life of God is Jesus Christ. You are not a Christian if you don't believe this. Number two, salvation is by grace apart from works. The second tenet of the of redemption the christian faith the pie vote upon which everything we receive is salvation as far as receiving the life of christ comes it is by grace through faith and not by any ritual the word works there does not mean no action that's not what it means there is an action your faith is an action are we together? The works there give an idea of ritualistic activities. I don't have to slaughter an animal. I don't have to go to the mountain in Israel to bow my head. I don't have to face the sun or face Jerusalem. All of those ceremonial rituals have been ended. The Bible says Christ is the end of that law, not the end of action. The end of the law. Are we together now? There are three dimensions of the law. Not all of them left. You have to understand this. There is the revelation of the law that is the revelation of the character of God. That will never change. It predated the law. It, it will never change. The universality of God's character is consistent. Whether from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the soul that sins will die. Nothing changes it. Grace only intercepts it, but that reality is still a fact. Are we together? Number two, there is the ceremonial activity of the law. That has been abolished. The observation of sons, observation of festivals, and, and so on and so forth, in a way to know God, is been abolished. Are we together? Number three, the rituals. The rituals that men practice in an attempt to atone for their sins. So when the Bible says Christ is the end of the law, it doesn't mean that the coming of Christ changes the character of God. The universality of God's character is a fact. I am the Lord, I change it not. Are we learning something tonight? You have to understand the tenets upon which you stand. That number one, Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Number two, that justification by faith is an act of His grace. You must understand this. It was an activity that no man could qualify to even participate and help God. So he had to do it by himself. The only responsibility of the believer as far as the impartation of eternal life is concerned is to believe and act by faith. According to Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. It says, who shall ascend to heaven and come? He said, the word is nigh thee in thy heart and even in thy mouth. The word of faith that we preach, right? That if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, the Bible says. And with the mouth, confession is made unto soteria, salvation. So justification is by faith. I don't come to God with a goat. Hoping that if, if any priest asks you to come with a goat, you see that he's not, he's not practicing all of that again. Are we together now? very very important number three the third thing you have to understand is that the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the life of God it is in the office of Jesus the Son to introduce you to that life but the personality that holds that life within you is the Spirit of God and that only in partnership with Him will you have capacity to release the possibilities in that life it's called the fellowship of the Spirit you must know this if you want to walk as a believer the Holy Spirit represents the ministry of Christ now every time the Bible says in Christ it means in partnership with the Spirit that hails from Him I can do all things through Christ in partnership with him the holy spirit is the custodian of the life of god and the one who makes it possible to release the potentials there listen to me very carefully you can be a possessor of the life of god 
but not a manifesto of the possibilities contained in that life. There are two different things. Possessing eternal life by confessing Christ is a fact. Has nothing to do with your feelings. But walking experientially in the reality of that life has to do with your partnership with the Holy Spirit. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Listen carefully. According as his divine power hath given us how many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. That all things was shrouded in a mystery called Zoe. Brought by the Holy Spirit. His very presence is the proof of Zoe in you. He's the witness, the spirit of adoption. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, but they are accessed through knowledge. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It says through the knowledge. Here is, here, here is the big confusion in the body of Christ. Through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. The next verse says, Wherefore has he given us these great and exceedingly precious promises that by them, by releasing them, we may prove experientially that we are partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So I have eternal life, but that eternal life is a possibility, potentially speaking, is at work in me it will never stop the devil from buffeting you but in partnership with the holy spirit manifesting as various things including the spirit of revelation that paul prayed for in ephesians chapter one he was talking to people who were already born again but were not releasing the possibilities that came with that life and he says for this cause for as a as a token of my desire for you to walk in these dimensions i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of revelation wisdom revelation in the knowledge of him that your heart although has received eternal life that it be flooded with light are we together now then he says that you may understand the power that was exerted when he raised christ from the dead etc etc so i can be born again you can be born again but the reality of the implication of that life may not find expression. That's why the Bible says it is by grace. Available by grace, but accessible through faith. Listen carefully. Available by grace, but accessible through faith. And the word faith there does not just mean believing. The faith there is a summation of every partnership that you have to go through in satisfying the condition to release that so grace provides it faith hallmarked by your obedience releases it this is the equation of the believer's work if it's not available by grace it cannot be accessible so when we partner with the word of god we are not ignoring the grace of god we are receiving it our obedience is a token of our reception it is available by grace but received through faith so when i type it is not the law i know that my prosperity and open heavens has been available by grace but my obedience is a proof that i'm interested in seeing it work in my life god cannot assume you are interested you he gave you a will and your obedience is partnering with your will so working out your salvation is not the law it's called partnership it's called koinonia it is the token of your expression it is the token of your interest to god that you want to see everything in him find expression in you zoe the life of god received by many experienced by few received by many experienced by few there are many possibilities that are enshrined in that life number one the bible tells us it's an indestructible life maybe let me finish what i started saying before we discuss a bit i was talking about certain pillars are we together the fellowship of the mystery that comes through partnership with the holy spirit 
Number four, the reality of righteousness. Righteousness. Kenyon defines righteousness as the ability to stand before the presence of the Father without a sense of inferiority, condemnation, and guilt. Um, I, I agree with that except for the fact that righteousness is another name given to the nature of God. The very nature of God at work in a human is called righteousness. Not just an ability to stand. That is the effect of righteousness. It's not righteousness. The effect of righteousness is that the possessor can now stand blameless. But that's not necessarily the definition. Are we together now? Righteousness, the nature of God at work in me. The authorization to be able to access his spirit. Righteousness. Number three. Number what? Number five. Is that in Christ and Christ alone is dominion a possibility. In Christ and Christ alone is dominion a possibility. Please understand this. This dominion thing, people chorus around as if they don't need God. Without God, dominion is a mirage. Dominion means exercising sovereign power over situations, over circumstances, and over the forces of darkness. Write it down. Dominion, the ability to exercise sovereign power, sovereign authority over situations, over circumstances, and over the forces of darkness is only a possibility in Christ. Every other thing outside Christ is negotiation and pacifism, not dominion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If a herbalist tells you he's trying to drive a demon, it's not dominion. Through the mysteries of the kingdom, he will pacify the spirit. It's called occultic pacifism. That's why the demon can be angry again and say the sacrifice is over. So you have to renew it. But dominion is exerting sovereign control anytime any day and remaining there not renewed by anything listen there is no sacrifice in the village that is done once and for all are you hearing what i'm saying everybody come on this is africa talk to me africa there is no sacrifice that is done once and for all whether you are aware or not somebody goes somewhere smuggles himself into a shrine and renews it can be per annum, can be per two years, or can be per when the gods are angry. When they start manifesting, the priest will now say, the gods have not eaten and you are eating. So people begin to die. And what happens? They slaughter a child or an animal and pacify. That's not dominion. That's negotiation. That's not dominion. Bishop Oedeko calls it a far above mentality. That's dominion. Where you are in a class that potentially speaking, you don't have any reason to relate with the vicissitudes here. And if at any point it comes, listen, let me tell you something about eternal life. Eternal life, listen carefully, eternal life is not a life void of challenges, but it's a life assured of complete victory. Now, thanks be to God who always always not sometimes now thanks be to god who always causes us to triumph the next time you say that you have the life of god don't think you are saying you have a designer watch a designer shirt no you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone listen if I give you a millionaire's ATM and I say look for some reason for just trusting me I reward that trust by giving you an ATM potentially speaking has more money than you will need in your life this is recession so an example with money is a very fruitful one it will help people understand are we together he gives you an atm are we together now but for some reason 
you have to be trained to know that that ATM is a fact that there's money inside it's a fact that potentially speaking you have access now you may move around with your friend that you used to eat with before it does not stop that the fact that you are a current possessor of that ATM experiencing the possibilities someone must be introduced to your life or a document must be introduced that is a map that guides you and says stand before a machine the name is ATM and you slot it and you are patient the dynamics of the operation this is where knowledge and understanding comes and you can hold that ATM forever and stand and swallow saliva in front of a shop that the ATM can buy the whole shop are we together now now you are crying to the one who gave you the ATM and he's saying I have made available so out of his love giving you the ATM is enough but he sent someone to come and guide you but that person is so gentle it will take your cooperation so he says look we created this ATM it's not like they gave us we understand how this thing works and you say no 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 no. I went to school just hold on when I am difficult this is what many people do so you hold this ATM for years and Satan comes around and tells you this thing is only a small card and he says it's a small card put it in your pocket and you put it in your pocket and move around this is what makes Christ look weak in the life of men this is what makes the Word of God look like it is of non effect so in spite of the fact that this reality is a fact knowledge of the systems of God the provisions that have been made in place everything we do in the kingdom is not adding to what Christ has done is accessing through partnership the mysteries of the kingdom that releases those possibilities so that after five years of working with God my life should be able to reflect more of God now than it did five years ago not just in terms of finances and all of that in terms of ascendance in the spirit I should not fear five years later what I was afraid of five years before I should not be a victim five years later of what I was a victim of before no. I prayed for a gentleman here I believe he's here who he was in the school of ministry he had a dream and somebody appeared to him in the dream punched his hand and he woke up physically with a punch with blood many years before would look at it and say hi this is a serious issue and go and shout like fools around but when I saw it I said I want to touch it so way so way this is not the issue of prayer there is an implication to the life i hold let my the life of god make contact with that infirmity the way god's life possessors of divine possibilities i want you to take away take your eyes away from your challenge if you want to believe this because that's what satan will use to mock you you are a possessor of that life why are you barren five years don't mock yourself and then you say it's true uh -uh. there is still a provision because to make sure that you release this life he still gave on to some apostles and prophets and look at all the provisions he put in place he gave you his life gave you his spirit gave you his word sent gifts in the body so that we are not without excuse if you fail you neglected the systems of God you neglected his life so you go to hell you neglected his word so there is no growth you neglect his spirit no direction you neglect the gift so no lifting anyone that fails in life listen to me it's not God he neglected the systems the life of God the spirit of God the word of God the gifts that he has sent Just like there are people here looking at me who have never been interested in the life of God. The life of God is the most superior reflection of his love and benevolence. More than giving you a pastor. More than giving you a prophet and apostle. More than giving you the Bible. More than giving you whatever it is. You have to receive them in that order. You don't receive his life. Even if you receive his prophets, you will not maximize your stay. The prophets can only assist as guided by God. They cannot impart life. A man of God can impart every other thing aside from eternal life. 
I can impart healing. I can impart an anointing. I can prophesy to you and your life will change. But I cannot say be born again. I can even stand before God to declare your sins forgiven. Right? In terms of the limitations that stand between you. But that is only a possibility in Christ. Please, I want you to believe this. This issue of being born again is not a choice. It's not a choice. People buy phones now. Their phones get missing and they cry for days. Because owning a phone now is almost not a choice. Let's institutionalize salvation. Let's make it part of the fabric of growth. To make it look like you don't say, okay, if you want to, you want to. You better come out. Whether you know it or not, you want to. Are we together? Eternal life. What you believe about Jesus is important you must believe that he came from heaven if you believe he came from Israel you are not saved you are not a child of God there is a footballer called Jesus he cannot save men he can play football but he cannot save men please let's clarify these loose ends quickly before we continue there are things you have to believe Jesus himself said in John chapter 6 I am the bread that came from heaven he told us his location that he came from heaven you must believe that he came from heaven number two you must believe in his incarnation his incarnation is the mystery that made the world flesh the womb of the woman is that mystery the mystery that made the world the eternal word that was with God John 1 verse 1 become flesh many Christians don't know this you must believe in the incarnation not reincarnation incarnation if you believe in the reincarnation of jesus christ you are an antichrist incarnation incarnation the word became flesh number three you must believe in his humanity he didn't just come and die and went away he walked upon the earth partook of the weaknesses of men there is jesus the man he walked upon the earth the Bible says he was in every way like us, tempted, yet without sin. If you don't believe in the humanity of Jesus Christ, you will shortchange yourself from walking in the fullness of the life of God. You must believe in the dominion he exerted by means of the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. Not by means of being Jesus, the Son of God. When he came upon the earth, he stripped himself of his godship and submitted himself as a model to the ministry of the holy spirit so every result gotten in jesus life was not because he was jesus it was because he was under the influence of the spirit so that we are not without excuse the same spirit that made jesus the christ is the same spirit that will make jakes the christ is the same spirit that will make Ejimi the christ is the same spirit that will make joshua selma the christ Believe in the humanity of Jesus. He demonstrated the sovereign power of God flawlessly above creation, above principalities and powers. He demonstrated to us in his earthly life that Zoe is a possibility. Are we together? You must believe in the passion of the Christ. Theologically speaking, the entire event that took place beginning from the upper room, the communion, where they received the Holy Spirit was where they had the communion. Are we together? Down to the experience in Gethsemane. Down to Pontius Pilate and Herod. Who used Jesus as a scapegoat to become friends. They were enemies. But Jesus, look how powerful Jesus was. Even before he died, he reconciled enemies. Then you must believe in every activity. The mystery of the whip for by his stripes we are healed the mystery of the crown of thorns that was put upon his head an exchange for our dominion restored you must believe in the mockery that he received you must believe in the fact that he was on his way to Golgotha the place of skull as an exchange for us Jesus did not die on the road he was hung on a tree it was necessary that he had to be crucified if Jesus died and it was not by crucifixion he would not be able to take the sins of the world there are conditions 
to be able to take the sins of the world number one you must become flesh number two your blood must be sinless number three you must enact a mystery that transfers the sin of men to you and that mystery is called the communion the communion is not what Christians take in church the communion is a sacrament there's a theological name for it. it is called the doctrine of interpenetration the mystery with which two people become one is what is used in marriage two separate entities by covenant still different personalities but one in the spirit and that is enacted through the communion John chapter 6 are you getting blessed tonight John chapter 6 let's read help us media let's read verse 35 okay just for time's sake let's run to 53 just four verses 53 to 57 John chapter 6 53 Jesus is speaking now then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you he's introducing them to the mystery that will make the sins of the whole world come into him you have to understand it's not just that he died for us we died in him so you need to find out how we entered him because Galatians 2 20 says I am or I have been crucified with Christ not just that he was crucified for me are we together Jesus died for me that's an act of love I died with him that's identification there are two different things it's not just enough to believe he did it for you you must believe that you did it in him that's why we are seated with him but we must trace where the journey started verily verily I say unto you except ye eat of my flesh listen carefully ye eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink of his blood what will happen to you ye have no life you are living physically but you are not a possessor of my life now to eat the flesh and to drink the blood is a mystery there is a prophetic act called communion a physical prophetic act but it's a language remember Hosea chapter 10 right Hosea chapter 12 I have spoken to you by the prophets I have used similitudes similitudes it's in the character of God to use similitudes what we call prophetic act a foreshadow an um, adumbration of something physical like he told Moses to lift the rod and that rod is Christ so it's in the character of God that's what I mean by the universality of his character is consistent both pre-old old New Testament post new <laughs> hallelujah 54 who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hard so way there is and I will raise him up at the last day 55 for my flesh is meat indeed now this sounds like occultism so you have to understand my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth aha he's now switching the parable for you to understand that he's not necessarily talking of physically eating he's talking about a condition of intimacy that can be likened to eating and drinking prophetically adumbrated by a physical activity to eat the blood the body and blood of jesus is not just to eat things no it is a dimension of intimacy that begins by accepting and receiving him so he says dwelleth in me and i in him eating and drinking is an adumbration of a system that gets you into christ and gets christ into you last verse as the living father had sent me now listen and i live by the father do you know what that means that means i ate and drank of the father so I now live in the Father. That same system that made me to live by the Father, it says, so that he eateth me shall also live by me. Listen, are we, you are intelligent now. Jesus is saying, the Father gave me his life. And he called how he got that life, eating and drinking. 
and he said the same way i ate of the father's life that means i ate of his flesh i drank of his blood to have his life so also that means we must understand how did jesus receive the way number one he was born of the spirit of the father understand this he was born of the spirit of the father number two he was empowered by the spirit of the father number three he walked in obedience to the spirit of the father these three conditions translated to him eating and drinking he released the reality of the fullness of the life of God everybody look at me communion is more than bread and wine if your experience at communion stops at just eating bread and drinking wine you are carrying out a religious activity that is powerless the eating and the drinking only becomes powerful on the strength of your understanding it is your understanding that releases the life are we together that means hi hallelujah every day of my life i can be eating the communion when i do the, i eat the communion certain things happen many of them we are going to look at it the bible says that we testify and we declare of the lord's death how do we declare of his death we died with him we are alive that means my being alive is a testament that he is alive when you understand all of these facets of this communion then you will find out you can release the possibilities that come with it healing breakthrough an invocation of the mystery of mercy i can spend all night talking about the mercy of god the mercy of god is a mystery that starts with sinners but is needed in the kingdom otherwise we will not attain that height mercy is a mystery in god that vetoes judgment in your life it has nothing to do with whether the judgment is legitimate or not the moment your life is in a situation where on legal basis the devil should prevail over you what you need is the application of the mystery of his mercy are we together remember when david took a man's wife are we together now david was a man who loved god he took a man's wife killed the man and when he had a man's wife a particular prophet came his pastor came and gave a parable he started with a parable and gave a parable a parable that reflected that a man bullied a man and took something and david said who is that man and he said you are the man you are the man do you know what happened the bible says immediately david repented and sought for mercy and i think it was abner his prophet he said ah the lord has shown you mercy and you will not die meaning the price for that thing was death if david did not invoke the mercy like saul he would die too so david did not become an heir to the throne and then a predecessor of jesus because of perfection the difference between him and saul was mercy There was nothing Saul did that David did not do. The difference was mercy. Mercy is only available in Christ. Mercy is a mystery that Satan cannot give. Mercy is a mystery that pastors, they can pardon, but they can't show mercy. We interchange the words. Mercy is a mystery. Mercy is not to be excused. Mercy is that they pay for you. So you enjoy the freedom, but at the expense of someone else's there are few men who can show mercy they can pardon you but mercy does not take away the price it only exempts you hallelujah tenants of the christian faith unshakable foundations that will make a man remain in christ doctrine will rise and fall denomination will rise and fall 
technology will introduce sex and rise and fall but after many years you will still be standing let me tell you if you ever fall in your christian race it's not because satan prevailed over you it's because your foundation was shaky when you don't know what you believe that make up your conviction the day you meet with somebody who is an intelligent professor who studied Scientology, he will sit with you and use quantum physics to wash away your intelligence and make you look at Jesus and say, I never knew you were, you were um, Buddha's mate. It's just that you came ahead of him. Every religion acknowledges Jesus, but what you acknowledge him as makes the difference. You acknowledge Jesus Christ as a carpenter's son. It is true, but you are still going to hell. Are we together now? Yes. I believe in him. And this is what I believe about him. This is what the devil, when he comes to your life, he probes the dimensions of your convictions. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't come to attack men. When he came to Jesus, he started throwing questions. The questions were testing how far. And he found out, ah, every dimension, there was a word basis. That word did not come by mistake. He went to the temple from age 12. He had been learning. He had been building. When Satan comes to your life, he will begin to throw issues around your life to find what dimension of spiritual reality has not become spirit and life to you. That becomes his access point to your life. Satan cometh to me. So he will come to everybody, but he did not find. Meaning there is a possibility that he can find. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You need to sustain an orientation in the spirit that defies every assault of darkness for instance the bible says while we look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen so if the devil wants to manipulate your senses to make you look like if you are truly in christ don't mind this stupid joshua selman and what he's saying if he's really in christ why is a and b and c happening the happening in your life does not change the fact that his life is in you Our eternal destinies are determined by the, whether or not we are possessors of that life. But the qualities of our lives on earth are dependent on the extent of our partnership through faith with the Holy Spirit in order to release those lives. So if I look at a man's life and his life demonstrates a dimension of spiritual possibility that is not in my life, aside from other factors like the election of grace and other things, it must mean therefore that there is a dimension of partnership he has sustained with the Holy Spirit that I've not been able to come into it. That's why a family can have five people. Their father can be a pastor, but the extent of their results will differ. Are we together now? Listen, when Jesus walked upon the earth, he was very specific with his actions. He intended for certain things to be understood about his work on earth. That's why he had to reveal himself to Paul to document these mysteries. Although the disciples saw him, when he resurrected, he still was with them 40 days and then left them 10 days in the upper room to receive the Holy Spirit. But even in the midst of that, he still had to anoint a man, Paul of Tarsus, Saul, who later became Paul, to be able to articulate the mysteries Paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery. The fellowship of the mystery. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 1, 2, 3 that we are alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Alienated from the life. Are we together now? Not experientially walking in the fullness of that life. Listen, tonight as we prepare to receive the communion, I want you to come to terms with certain things. Number one, you must have the brokenness and the unashamedness to admit that if there is anything in your life that is yet to reflect the fullness of Christ, it is not because of a limitation posed by God. It is that there is a dimension of partnership with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? That has not yet begun or has not yet come to fruition. 
for you to experience that dimension you are only authorized to receive results if you can maintain that posture that my life and your life today is not a reflection of who God is but a reflection of how far we have chosen to walk with him it's an uncomfortable truth but victory starts from that standpoint either he lied or there's something wrong on our own part are we together so if there are witches appearing every night destroying your life you sleep and somebody appears now listen let me balance something to deny the existence of that possibility is another dimension of foolishness this is what sometimes we preachers do we say it does not exist no it exists you can only be exempted you can't stop it satan still has authority over the systems he's still the prince of the power of air he's called a prince the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience for a season he's still allowed what happened is that god created a mystery that exempts you causes are real they are still at work yokes are real they are still at work they will still attempt you and until your knowledge bails you out knowledge of what the systems of the kingdom bails you out you will still be a victim of them so when you come to me as a man of god and say sir somebody came in the night and slept with me i said that's nonsense no you are not being accurate you may have ascended a level of understanding that exempts you from that experience but to deny the existence of that thing is a joke what i can do is i can introduce to you what christ gave to conquer it hallelujah you have won the victory lift your voice and sing unto him hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you down you are the risen king you're seated in majesty seated in majesty you are the reason king you are the reason king. my life and my experiences are too small to limit everything god said about zoe if i live my life today dying of sickness dying of failure my life cannot be a model enough to say this is all that is contained in God and I must have the unashamedness to admit that my limitations are not caused by the inability of God to produce that result it's been encapsulated in the way it should be a challenge for me that there is a dimension of understanding through the ministry of the word the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of his body we are members of his body not just his spirit we are part of the body and the body as an entity holds possibilities so i can love jesus christ but i may not have been taught that part of his system is the introduction of apostles and prophets that can speak over your life that can make me walk barren of the possibilities of god but when i study through the word that there is a provision made like that then i can align myself to that provision and now begin to walk in a new reality tonight is a night of brutal admittance we have to come to a point where we admit that listen my father has not gotten a job for 20 years my mother has not gotten a job for 20 years it is not because god cannot release jobs it is because there may be a dimension either they have refused to receive his life partner with the spirit understand his word or discern his body these are the causes these are the things that are responsible for the limitations of people so what we are doing tonight is not why you will be healed what you are understanding now is why you will be healed this understanding is what gives life to the wafers the person who made the wine you are about to drink 
may be somewhere you bought the wine he was doing business the person who made the waffles you're about to eat he may even be an unbeliever he just had that christians eat this thing often and he said this is a stream of income and produced it so you are eating somebody's value you are not eating power it is your understanding that translates that mystery like water turned to wine between the water and the wine was a word when a word came it turned the water to wine it is that word that understanding that will turn bread to his body and the drink to his blood color does not matter whether the color is green or blue it's only red to affect your psychology even if this is what you take it is your understanding in the kingdom power is released through understanding not just motion you tithe it is not the money that brings the power is the understanding that gives life to the activity that's why jesus said this is how you will build and the gates of hell will not prevail upon this rock the rock is not peter the rock is a system upon this formula you will build never speak outside of understanding so the system is that you first understand then you act when you act out of understanding you are building upon a rock when you act void of understanding you are building upon sand the sons of Skiva showed us a graphic example of that they spoke but there was no understanding and he said Jesus I know he built upon a rock Paul I know he built upon a rock but you are just speaking that means you come and eat because you heard that Bishop Oyedeko blessed communion and people took it and all of a sudden people were vomiting animals and then you take it and as soon as you take it as you are getting home the same spirit comes again because it's not the ritual the understanding is where the power lies so Paul I repeat Ephesians 1 for this cause it's not enough that you have received the way for this cause I have to go the extra mile to bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you that the Holy Spirit may reveal himself unto you as the spirit of wisdom and understanding so that you will know epignosis come into an understanding not awareness come into an experience where you and the information has become one when you understand this then you take that step and you find out that life is now released some of you because of this you will not even be able to hold the communion cup because you are now holding it now with understanding the demon that oppresses you has seen the light understanding gives life to the symbol remember the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding when that light comes that's what releases the power ordinarily you would have carried it and eaten and said okay, can i take another one you see why paul rebuked the church in corinth they were not discerning the lord's body a time came when many of them started using the communion for alcoholism because they did not have a system of preserving this thing so they looked forward to communion services communion will always remain and then they didn't just take a little this thing this is just for social reasons and then to guide people financially but then you could have a big cup and fetch so there were people who would fetch and go and hide somewhere they didn't believe in Jesus and they would drink and Paul found out they were getting tipsy in the middle of an outpouring and Paul said no you people should come we need Bible study something is wrong you guys if you are hungry that's what Paul said if you are hungry do what go and eat in your house don't come to the Lord's house and violate his temple by eating he said for this cause this is it for not discerning for acting foolishly out of understanding many are weak many are sick many do sleep when was the last time you saw written in the grave of a man that he died because he didn't discern the Lord's body he said he died of cardiac failure for this cause so if I want to improve my life it's not all up to God the way is at work it's been available by grace but my partnership I must check the systems I'm ignoring I am ignoring the life of God like some of you are doing looking at me now not born again 
when you see people talk about get born again, say forget about them, Jerry. They are just hopeless people. After all, so 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 sociology said religion is the opium of the masses. That guy may probably be in hell now. Be careful. Are we together now? Hmm. Don't 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 listen to junks. You can write it and pass your exams, but when it comes to your eternal destiny, you must be serious. You have rejected his life, or you have rejected the ministry of his spirit you have rejected the ministry of his word you have rejected the ministry of his body these are the provisions made i want to ask you a question tonight which one have you rejected you can easily know it by looking at your life you have insulted every man of god you know by saying look forget it i insult every man of god we can all go to christ you have accepted Christ, you may have accepted his word, but you have rejected his body. There is a consequence, a bitter one. They are taken for a prey and none say it, restore. The Bible tells us that there is a system with which God built his ecclesia, the church. He said Christ is the chief cornerstone. Immediately you meet Christ, he introduced two ministries called the apostles and the prophets. They are the foundations of the church. If you do not meet them, your building cannot grow. The cornerstone is there. You ignore them, you build nonsense. It's a system. It's an election of grace. Which one have you ignored? Some of you have, ignored, have supposedly admitted the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You like power. You don't doubt. Even if somebody jumps up and hangs in the air, you like it. But you have ignored the ministry of the word. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That illumination that comes through his word. You have, pay attention to what I'm teaching tonight. You have ignored that boundary of revelation. And you will find out that there will be a lot of charismatism around your life. And you will know which one is witchcraft and which one is of God. Because there is no compass. There is no, the word of God is like a buffer solution. It defines the dimensions of the operations of the Holy Spirit. So when you are going out of it, the word of God guides you and says, no, every manifestation must be consistent with the character of God. There are people who have embraced supposedly the ministry of the word. The Bible calls them men who have come around the baptism of John and ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Acts 19, remember, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Verse 1. And verse 2, they says, we have not even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And Paul was surprised. They were believers, disciples, going through Bible study. He said, unto what then were you baptized? They said, the baptism of John. And Paul said, no. The baptism of John was a baptism of repentance. To the end that they should believe on he that should come, even Jesus Christ. And when they had it, the Bible says they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And Paul laying his hands on them, they now received the ministry of the Spirit of God. Right? They prayed in tongues and prophesied. The Bible says there were about 12 of them. Acts chapter 19, 1 to 5. Thank you very much. So it is possible to believe the Bible just because you inherited it from your pastor but not walk with the Spirit. Jesus died to make all these systems available. His life in us exclusively given through the office of the Christ but released by the interaction of that believer with the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the body. We teach a lot about the Word of God. We teach a lot about the Spirit of God but we ignore His body. Christ is the head. He's not a head moving around. That head has a body and he acknowledges that the body is part of himself. And then in another mystery, he calls that body his wife. You don't ignore a man's wife and, leave, and then he will laugh with you. The Bible said jealousy is the rage of a man. So as you insult his wife, simply because the wife is wounded. Are we together? If a Jimmy's wife has an injury and you say because of that she's no longer a woman and Jimmy will stand close to her first before he will give you a slap. You say by this little act, let me prove to you that when I said I do, I meant it. I also said I mean it. So, the man of God may not be perfect but he's still part of the system. When you criticize him, you are criticizing somebody's wife and that man will react. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
for this course i've taught it here go and get the teaching on the body of christ i told you the mystery of receiving from the body of christ was adumbrated in the parable of samson samson went to the philistines and he gave them a riddle he said out of something weak came something strong and they could not decipher the parable he killed a lion and then bees did not know where to go and put honey they went to a carcass and put honey there meaning if you must enjoy the honey you can endure the smell so you come to a man of god who is temperous but look beyond the temper there is an anointing there is always honey in the midst of the carcass this is the mystery of discerning the body you have to ignore the limitations that are in people so if the pastor does not look like you you may see him a yopi person and babs as if he's, he's some of these touts around these these vegas guys he may be that may not be the best but the truth of the matter is that he may be anointed the woman may dress and she may be careless you know like i was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and i told them i went for a program and there was a woman of god who was introducing something and kai i'm not somebody who talks about dressing but mm -mm, even till today it's too much it's, it's not it's not she didn't leave anything to the imagination very bad for a congregation very bad for a congregation i say it again very bad for a congregation anyway it happened but the fact remains that the woman was very anointed can you endure the smell because the honey is there it's a mystery how the bees endure the smell to pitch it there there is this treasure let me give you the new testament translation that treasure is hidden in the bible didn't say in vessels in earthen vessels so you may not like me as a person but why don't you look beyond the limitation and see that there is a treasure that's why there is no church that cannot bless me if you search for jesus you will find him i've ministered in all kinds of places i remember when we were coming back from ekiti when we met some of the the the, the men of god that prayed for us pastor jakes they could not speak yoruba that's enough to annoy me say what is all this i'm the one who needs the miracle i need long life that baba cannot speak english but is walking in an experience of a reality what do you think we did we looked for an interpreter there has to be an interpreter we found an interpreter who came and the man said we should kneel down now i have received jesus christ i am working in partnership with his spirit i have received of the word but i discerned his body i would have said i'm a man of god i i was going for a crusade it was a powerful crusade mighty miracles and on the way we stopped and the man didn't even say you are pastors say kneel down first. really that's what he said and in yoruba he was just praying i didn't hear one thing he said but all i know is that that man was long he I was living long enough for me to cover that grace which part of god's systems have you ignored please hear this message tonight is the answer to the prayer that demon that has oppressed you you have quoted scripture that's very good it's true that you are working with the holy spirit but your knowledge is limited but there is still out of his benevolence he has kept an anointing with a vessel one word go will set you free of 10 years of limitations but we will refuse and say look i know jesus christ by myself so you limit god's possibilities to only the revelation that the holy spirit and the word is permitted through your willingness and sometimes your lifetime may not afford you the dimension of revelation it takes for the result you need so you must tap into every channel that's what he meant when he told nicodemus you must be born of the water and the spirit otherwise you cannot enter you can see it but you will not enter seeing the kingdom is that it has come to you but entering it is becoming a testament of the reality so you can now say since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken no that thing was not a poem to be recited by everyone it was a man's testimony based on a dimension of possibility you have to make it yours 
before you speak otherwise you will keep mocking yourself this is what this unguided confessions that are not out of understanding will keep mocking us if ye are abraham's children you will do the works of abraham what was his work he believed god god told him something god said abraham i want to introduce a dimension to you i have not done to anybody and abraham believed god tonight is easter all over the world there are cathedrals there are ministries there are crusades packed full with the over two billion christians on earth attempting men of god there are tapes rolling all over churches right now every man of god attempting sincerely to reveal something that the people can take back about easter i brought to you a reality the bible says this is the record it was documented god has given us eternal life but this life is in his son and whosoever has the son has that life but grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge according as his divine power hath not will hath is a fact giving us giving us giving us every limitation in my life and your life is a revelation of something about the systems of God we have ignored or are still learning and have not come into that fullness when you know that you put an urgency to your pursuit for God for the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you for the more I see your face the more I want to see Jesus shortly we are going to take the communion please those relevant people let's station them there are three mysteries that the Lord revealed to me that will be open to us tonight as we partake of the communion three number one the communion tonight is an encounter with the spirit of revelation we need revelation in our lives we need revelations in our lives brothers and sisters please hear me we need revelation in our lives the limitation of my life and your life is not dependent on satan is dependent on how far i can access the dimensions of the possibilities that the life of god can provide based on the knowledge that i have his life only gives you potentials your partnership accurate partnership makes it an experience tonight as you partake of this let something boil in you that all men are equal in christ but they are not equal in possibilities our possibilities are determined by the truth we have chosen to receive and the dimensions of the systems of the kingdom we have comprehended and so we must press hear what Paul says he says this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press there is something I need to know about death to stop being afraid of it there is something I need to know about poverty there is something I need to know about restoration there is something I need to know about fruitfulness the love of God is revealed when we study his systems the bible says the invisible things of god right the invisible things are seen they are learned they are taught by the things that appear so i look at and say what what kind of a man is this that grants me access to his life sends his spirit to me causes men moved by the same spirit to document more information the apostles did not have a bible all they had was the Torah right the Pentateuch the five books of Moses but now God has gone the extra mile for our generation because he knows evil and wickedness will increase and he has left a document to still help us and then in addition to that he has empowered men and women in the body so that we are not without excuse and what a joy the Lord has spoken to us this year that is our year of triumph 
that means we can walk with these systems of the kingdom and rise when i was studying i was just studying the passion of the christ tonight and i was so touched looking at everything jesus went through just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me that's what he did tonight well the cross will always represent the love God had for me when the Lord of glory heaven sent gave all on Calvary just for me he just for me Jesus came and did So what is the implication of tonight? I remember. I remember his sacrifice. While he was on the way to Golgotha. The Bible says. That there were certain things in the mind of God. And Paul was giving access to those things. They were encapsulated in a document. And Paul calls it a testament. And then Hebrews chapter 9. Paul is speaking. Pastor Alpha read it there. Jesus knew that those things would be activated only at his death. So they were prepared. And when he died, there was still ignorance. And he started moving through holy men to document these things. To say, now you have access. I have died. For every will is not yet activated until the death of the testator. Jesus died. If he did not die, eternal life will not be a reality. He hung on that cross between two thieves a 33 and a half year old man naked there was no covering no he was naked and he looked at the world that he came to die for and the people yelled crucify him let his blood be on our children they were prophesying something that would really happen because his blood had to be on their children for them to be saved what was a statement of war was a prophecy. Let his blood be upon our children. They didn't know that was why he was on the cross. They mocked him. Let me tell you something. Jesus did not go to the cross as Jesus. He went to the cross as me and you. When he stood there, he saw me. He saw Joshua Selman. He saw Koinonia. Remember Acts chapter 2. They were caught in their heart and they said, Men and brethren, what do we do? He said, Repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive that promise for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to your children's children he says as many as are afar of which the Lord will call this is where we came in in Acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 down to 44 the Bible says the moment the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him they of the circumcision the Jews said ah I perceive truly we now see that God is no respecter of persons but that in every nation whoever calls upon his name will be saved tonight we are taking the communion number one access to the spirit of revelation according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 I bow my knees and I pray for you O church of the Lord Jesus Christ that I desire you to release the reality of Zoe that life that is indestructible that life that is far above principalities and powers. The life that is capable of demonstrating dominion here and now. The life that is characterized by victory. The life of meaning. The life of fulfillment. The life of purpose. But it's access through knowledge. The spirit of revelation. Number two. The second thing that the communion will release to us tonight is re-enacting that covenant of life 
through that prophetic act that we are going to be doing the bible says he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life do you know what that means there are many things at work in your life now that were not sponsored by that eternal life watch this my body as designed by god is supposed to grow through a system there should be a symmetry and a synergy correct if a boil starts coming out from here that boil is growing not at the same pace with my body now biologically they can say something is responsible but spiritually we know that another life is responsible so the result of that another life i see it different from my body so what you do is by the mystery of the communion you are taking it to your physical body physical flesh and blood it's a mystery that reminds the devil that every part of you was handed over to christ that means whatever is not a derivative of the life of god put it scripturally every tree that was not planted by my father meaning there are other farmers are we together there are other what farmers for instance while men slept an enemy he's a farmer the bible says he came and sold he's a farmer and left whether that sleep is a spiritual sleep psychological sleep as a result of the weight of the vicissitudes of life fatigue several things happening in your life and you did not know and it weighed you down or as a result of real physical sleep the activities of darkness listen as you take this i want you to discern the lord's body don't just to discern the lost body is not to eat slowly to discern the lost body is to take it with understanding it's not that you close your eyes you take it slowly no 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 that is religion to discern the lord's body is that as you are taking this truly speaking this is wafers this is wine but the, my understanding authorizes the holy spirit to form an eclipse between that that activity that dinner thing and me and as i lift it is the same thing as the servants who were carrying water while they lifted it the distance between his word and your mouth causes a miracle to happen this is what will make somebody hold it and just the distance from the table to your mouth you can't stand it an anointing responding to your understanding that's why somebody can take the communion and all of a sudden you feel you just took something small that before it got to your stomach a lot of itself was hanging around different parts of your body but all of a sudden you take it and you are already feeling fire on your leg did that thing get to your leg it's a mystery you only gave him space tonight can your communion be a body that you have prepared for him we have prepared a body remember a body has thou prepared without a body he cannot move so the communion just like the human body can become the body tonight that communion can be the hand that heals you tonight that communion can be the mystery that destroys the devourer for your non tithing and god can say i give you a clean slate start again tonight that communion can be a reversal of several things if you take it with understanding are we together so we are going to pray but before we pray overflow one overflow two by the road those online from any nation and any place you are listening to the first key is to receive the life of god zoe the life of god is not christianity christianity was a description given to possessors of that life god is not initiating you into a religion he says come on to me listen there are people seated here looking at me inside and outside you are tired and you're saying apostle as i stand right now sincerely i don't even know what my life is about i have tried like the worship team sang i've done everything but tonight i am in all humility lifting my heart and my hands and saying i need that life my father refused to receive the life my mother refused to receive the life my brothers and sisters refused to receive the life i choose to receive that life and there are yet others 
who may say at one point i came for an altar call but sincerely i don't know the name of what i did i only know that they said congratulations and they gave me hamper i ate what was inside but nothing entered me and this night i want to eat of my the bread he said my bread is my body is meat indeed for in the sanctuary Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is Wherever you are, just wait till I start counting before you come. I'm going to count one to five because of time. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, as I sat listening to you, I knew that I had to be sincere with myself. And I knew that I have to win this war. My life does not reflect Zoe in any way. Number one, I have not even received it. Every time I hear preachers talk like Saul of Tarsus, I mock them and I say they are wasting my time. But tonight, I want to win that war. And number two, there are others who said, well, I know that I came and confessed something. For a while, I was even walking with God. But sincerely, I know between me and God right now that I'm not serious with Him. And I don't want any pretense again. Wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is already speaking to you. Overflow one, two, wherever you are. I want you to make your way here. I would have asked you to go to the overflow outside, but there is a reason why I want all of you here. So as I count one to five, there are people there. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Leave your seat and come out here right now. If you are ashamed of your friend, you are ashamed of your brother, you are ashamed of your sister, then you are wasting the mystery of Easter. Start coming. One, God bless you. Leave your seat and come. Don't be ashamed. Clap for them, Koinonia. Appreciate them as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. That flows from help me see Emmanuel's faith. Keep coming. Lose all their guilty strength. The third mystery that you will receive tonight from the communion is an empowerment for a strange order of dominion please don't forget these three things don't forget these three things number one access to the spirit of revelation number two an exit of everything that was not planted by God there will be mighty mighty miracles and deliverances as you take this number three an empowerment for a strange order of dominion the centurion said for i am a man under authority i say unto one go and he goeth i say unto another come and he cometh speak the word only the bible says where the word of a king is there is power that as you partake of this communion something will come upon you the bible says that when you take it right first corinthians 11 when you take it that you announce you declare the lord's death the meaning of that is that you tell principalities and powers that the person you used to know is not the person now jesus died and i died in him and now the life that i live i live by the faith of the son of god another system so way god's life now this is what we are going to do I'm going to give you two prayer points we are going to pray seriously and um, everyone outside you don't have to come there are the first overflow at the projector there is a provision like this the second overflow at the projector there is a provision like this and then in here we did it because of time now this is all you are going to do those here you would come this way just take the cup and the bread 
drop the cup there and march this way those here you will do the same thing and then i think there'll be a provision here at the minister stand so that we don't have chaotic things please some of you will fall under the anointing as you do it just be careful and let's just coordinate them i want to pray and bless this now and then we are going to pray the moment you partake of it you go back and find a corner and begin to blast in tongues and pray these three things in your life that's happy stuff for you you have to pray it with all your heart and say lord i understand this mystery let my understanding permit the life of god to find expression prayer point number one lord i believe i believe but in case i do not believe help my own belief lift your voice and pray whatever is not of faith is sin lift your voice and pray pray inside and outside Pray inside and outside. Are you praying? Shabala katapras kataba. Help my own belief. Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. point number two lord as i partake of this let the mystery of the communion be enacted in me whatever this represents i permit it to work in me lift your voice and pray seriously inside outside those online get bread and get wine or water get something that represents the communion hallelujah hallelujah please listen i want to pray for the communion first corinthians 11 from verse 23 the apostle is speaking and he says for i have received of the lord that which i also delivered unto you that the lord jesus listen that same night which was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 after the same manner he also took the cup listen are you seeing the order so you take the bread then you take the cup he took bread and said eat then he took the cup and he says this is my blood of the new testament do this as often and then he says 26 for as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes now he says for this cause verse 30 many are weak for not partaking of this with understanding many are weak many are sick and many among you sleep meaning if i partake of it with understanding among other things it should destroy weakness it should destroy sickness and it should destroy death that's the next prayer point lord weakness sickness and the plague of death any kind of death 
it lives my life now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray sickness, weakness, death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please agree with me. I want to pray. I tell you, I sense such a strong anointing in this place. I'm praying here at the projector stand everywhere. Those online, regardless of any nation, just go and get something. Water, wafers, food, whatever. It's just a token. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh. of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ father tonight I stretch my hands prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ upon this communion this is ordinary wine and wafers but Lord we command it to lose its earthly significance now and take on a heavenly significance and Lord I pray using this as a point of contact to every other communion set around the world connected to us now I decree and declare that this becomes a type and a shadow a similitude of the body of Jesus a similitude of the bread the blood of Jesus Christ and Lord I pray that as we partake tonight we access the spirit of revelation as we partake tonight every stranger in our life must go immediately and Lord as we partake tonight fresh fire for dominion and triumph in the name of Jesus therefore Lord we declare this blessed we call it blessed right now i put the word of god upon it and i declare that it will produce miracles in the name of jesus god bless you please start coming start coming quickly worship him help us let's just have some people come and stand open it up and then Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus.
that is coming and there must be a reintroduction of a fresh dimension of the spirit of prayer we have seen measures we have seen faces but in this season a fresh dimension the devil has cheated many people and we go to the place of prayer and just waste our time and we really don't pray but in the name of Jesus restoration of that grace for prayer restoration of that grace for prayer restoration restoration of the grace for prayer Step in to send the captives free. Kado.
ushers, just the ushers first, just the ushers first, and see the grace that is coming on the ushers, and see the grace. It's a very special night in the spirit. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force holding my life, holding my family, Holding my destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost, you must let me go now. Lift your voice and go. Upon Mount Zion, 
there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. I want you to really be angry tonight and insist that something must break open in your life. At the count of three, you will arise tonight as the God of Jeshua. The one that arrives, he rides upon the wings of the sea. Listen, as you shout that name, it's not a ritual. All I see in this room now is just fire. And I know that the Lord is going to descend with a shout like the warrior that he is. Are we together now? Whether you are in the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four by the road, following online, I want you with the simplicity of your childlike faith to shout that name, Jesus, and that fire will come upon you. Or just must have them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle, and I decree and declare it's time to challenge and confront the gates of darkness. It's time for the sons of Jacob to possess their possession. It's time for families to be restored. Therefore, Lord, as we lift up this shout to hear in the spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and every source responsible for the retrogression in anyone's life and destiny, it's time for it to be true. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command that spirit. I command that devil. Bring them out. Shako, Sato, Shabari, Kata. What shout? I dismantle gates. I cause yokes and ordinances. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out. Bring them out quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the spirit of delay. This delay is a wicked spirit, it can tie a life and can tie a destiny. Lift your hands. I see that fire locating a group of people. Lord, at the count of three, anyone here under the influence of delay, any family here at the count of three, may that spirit leave you. One, two, three. I just delay now. I just delay now. I just delay now. Shakur, the second, take the back. I just delay now. Delay now, my God. I cause delay now. I cause delay now. I cause delay now. I cause delay now. It says, For your shame you shall receive double. The Lord is ministering very powerfully. I'm still praying over delay. Listen very carefully. I'm still praying over delay. Many of you do not even know that currently is delay in your ministry, in your life. Any dimension you should have entered but have not entered is delay. I say it again. I stretch my hands by this anointing. In the name of Jesus, let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now. Let the fire that will Fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end the earth fall upon you now. It says, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest. 
I want to pray. I don't know what keys results from our lives. There are many well-meaning believers. There are many well-meaning individuals. You have hands, but you can't eat. You, there is a song we used to sing growing up. It says some have food, but cannot eat. Some can eat, but have no food. This, this is the category I want to address now. You have capacity, but no results. Gifted, but not rewarded. Gifted, but not blessed. Anointed, but no one is placing a demand on your grace. Shalakatos. Shalakatos. Ma shalakatos kete 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 Ente rokas kopara hasene kete balakata. Skabara to zanda takato shadia. E preke to zata. Makato skabara katos. Ente sekete zeketa. Japaru kasabaya kata. Ente koto sharakata. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare whatever has hindered your productivity, may the fire of the Holy Ghost separate you and that spirit now. Separate you and that spirit now. There's a category of people God is ministering to me right now. Just, just walk with me. You always do the wrong things. There is a spirit that makes you do the wrong things. The wrong business. The wrong relationship. The wrong friends. You don't know why everything in your life, when there is trouble, that's when you come. Anything good happening, you will go away from it to evil. He says, he says, the Lord's prayer, lead us not into temptation. That means a man can be led into temptation. And he said, deliver us from evil. Lead us not. A businessman can be led into destruction, led into temptation. A precious anointed lady with a great destiny can be led into temptation lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil listen one of the most treasured gifts that you must covet in your life is the ability to hear God clearly the times we live in now Guess what will punish you again and again? He said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Here's how I quote it. If the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. When you are, many of us hear demons clearly. You hear spirits clearly. You hear voices, nonsense voices clearly. You don't need to pray to hear them. But do you know that many of us now, even our dreams have been hijacked and manipulated. You don't even know whether it's God speaking now or not. They come as an appearance of light, but the message is not consistent with the integrity of God. So you don't even know what to believe again. Dreams are prophetic avenues for the speakings of God to reach the saints. But they can be hijacked and manipulated by the powers that be. A lady can be manipulated to reject her husband. A gentleman can be manipulated to reject his wife. A person can be manipulated to reject his voice, he, his job. There are many people, they got jobs, a spirit told them leave. They thought it was God and they left it. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a vision. Be sensitive. Something will happen here now. And I'm seeing people in the realm of the spirit. But I'm not seeing ears. Imagine like a man, no ears. This is what I'm seeing. Now I understand by this vision what the Bible says. He that hath an ear. Physically, we are supposed to have ears. But right now in the name of Jesus. This is not for everybody. Hold on. I'm praying right now. There is a grace that will open the hearing of people I stretch my hands Lord where are they the men and women that need to hear you in this season for ministry to move forward I stretch my hands representing the hands of God and I command the hearing ears be open now help them be open now 
be open now. For business, be open now. For ministry, be open now. For your career, be open now. Hallelujah. And Isaac sowed in that land. He sowed in a specific, there is a geography to increase. It doesn't just happen everywhere. There are people today, if the devil wants to destroy them, he will give them visa to UK. They will think he's breakthrough. Not every open door is anointed. There are times the devil destroys you by opening doors. It's not always closed doors. There are open doors that, that are open doors towards doom. He said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm. Thou shalt show me the path of life. He said for it is in your light that we see light. We are going to cry for divine direction. Many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it. Lord, what is the next phase of my life? You can't remain like this and just sit down. What is the next season? What is your blueprint? Lift your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. I buy into the mind of the Spirit. What is your communication for my ministry, for my life in this season? I don't want to be found where you were. I want to be found where you are. that have an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying not what he said what he's saying what he's saying what he's saying he said the spirit speaketh expressly not the spirit spoke the spirit speaketh expressly direction oh listen listen let me talk to us a little especially i know that a generation of young people were very proud we just believe that just because we went to school we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence now destiny is not just academics and education you must cry part time per second for revelation this ministry by the grace of god we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear god but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh god we are not going do you know it is costly to go without god it's cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where God is not. There are men of God that started well. But people encourage you and say, this is how they do it in ministry. When you get to this level, this is the next step. And you foolishly took a step. A step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing. Hallelujah. It matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until God says move. I remember after our second crusade in this ministry, the next year, we were discussing and they said, where are we going? I went to the Lord and the Lord said, you are not going anywhere. And I said, okay, we're not going anywhere. Ah, but I thought we'd do it every year. Mm -mm. Be careful, the ritual of religion can destroy you. God used to do th this way. It doesn't mean he has to do it the same way. The most important thing is let it be him doing it. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness you are merciful. Mm. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Nothing in this world is Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. 
we live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed god is a god of speed i don't know why i'm preaching this now this is part of the miracle service god is the god of speed but god is not the god of rush there is a difference between speed and rush many of us the spirit of god is speaking to someone here you need to calm down the way you are running with your life you are going to land in trouble the way you are running with ministry you will land in trouble the way you are approaching marriage the way you are approaching destiny you will land in trouble culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch my soul wait thou upon the lord god is a god of speed but until he speaks you are on your own it's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving running but not moving and here comes a man as weak as he is but he can walk at the pace of god and more can be achieved in one month with god than 10 years alone have you not learned the excellency of walking with god he said for with god all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we're rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul waits down upon the lord it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully he says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep There are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the god to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We are still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. No. There are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. 
Oh, come Lord Jesus. Come and direct me. Give me direction. Are we together? The race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. Not even bread for them that are wise. When a man subscribes to the direction of God, your life may look controversial for a while, but all that will be before you is beauty and glory. Then your life will become Beulah and Hephzibah, the delight of the nations, the excellency of waiting. The hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. It's easy to rush. It's easy to do a lot of things. You will make more mistakes in your life rushing. There is power in waiting. Are we together? There is power in waiting. We're going to pray for the sick now. There's a lot to do tonight. But listen very carefully. If this message is for you, then I want you to receive it from the depth of your heart. You know, when we come like this, there are various things that the Lord is doing to several people. Not everyone is sick. Not everyone is oppressed. But a word can come and God says, be careful. There are people about to relocate now to regions. They've not sought God. They just assumed. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is no place on earth called greener pastures. Greener pastures is a spiritual location. It's where the voice of God for you is. God is already helping someone. How many Nigerians smuggled their way through the desert? trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern appreciate and reward value that's all they have a greater propensity to discern to appreciate and to reward value you can be where you are if you are truly directed by God and he will come to you and bless you are we together now how many of you are trusting the Lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we're going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer I want to settle down and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on Friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now I promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of God is an opportunity to watch Lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can I learn you must remain a student we are all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting God for a healing miracle if you are an overflow one well, now hold on I want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are an overflow one two or three please I want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting God for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you are here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you I notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the Lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the Lord is showing me something about this woman you don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Let me tell you.
you something. I'm not trying to embarrass this precious lady. I don't know you. I'm just seeing you for the first time. I'm not a woman. So I can't pretend to say I know what is happening here. But for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and I'm asking it boldly do you believe that God can give you new fallopian tubes where are you coming from madam let me tell you there is a God that sits in heaven God is not a herbalist he's a miracle worker put your hand in your stomach look at me shout Jesus as loud as you in the name of Jesus father that's all right I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes the God that do it wonders brand new fallopian tubes I say it again, brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her social life. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. Lord is showing me somebody. It's just all wrong. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm saying that someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life. And the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I declare to you, not only will you or your brother be healed, I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sing for us that song, Creator of the Universe. Creator of the Universe. What can you do? What can you do?
you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing fibroid. Is that true? How long? Seven years. Fibroid. Confirmed in the hospital. That devil is going to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I've not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God. Oh, my God. 
the Lord. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the next half of this year. Hear the word of the Lord. Become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required for my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus name. Open your mouth and please pray. lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen that's the next prayer point we prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be returned one more time Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palma worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
name of Jesus Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty. I cause failure. Pray. Jesus caused the victory. Jesus, I decree and declare that my help comes from above. I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord. And in this season, I prophesy to my destiny, Ebenezer receive the help of God. Lift your voice and pray. Call for help.
Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Was he praying? Many of us here, all you need is the ministry of helpers. Are we together now? The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Do you know why he spoke about the hills? Because God used the strategy of the hill to protect the people. Every time there was war, he would lead them up the hill. And if they got there, there would always be victory. Remember Elijah. When, it, when there was time for any contest, he would say, go up the hill. Mount Camel, Mount Zion, Mount this and that. And so he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. But he said, no, no, no where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then he says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man. Blessed is a man that finds help from God. Many people are suffering because there is no help. Life can be cheap when there is help. Believe me when I tell you this. How much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it? How much is it? What is the job issue with a single signature? A man's life can change but I told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default I like you to cry father in this season I'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus was you praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you have value you are packaged your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at butchery my god arise for me as a helper Shaka barakatosh, shaka taka 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 ta, raka ta barakatosh, shake te 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 leba kata ta, shama sonda barakatosh ya taka ta. Help for my family, O God. We cry for your help. Pray for your business. Arise, O God, as a helper. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Then we were like them that dream, and then said they among the hidden, the Lord hath done great things for us. He said, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. hallelujah hallelujah we are still praying over the issue of help listen you are going to pray for your loved ones i know this about africa if you rise alone you will not remain there <clears throat> in africa as you rise you pray for your loved ones to rise too if you are the only successful person out of 15 people they will stretch you and drain you if joseph and his brothers were also equally successful they will not persecute him but he was one out of many i saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bowing to one person and the brother said no way and they walked him out my bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household sometimes it's not binding and casting lord show them mercy too so that as i'm rejoicing they will rejoice and leave me in peace are you ready to pray say in the name of Jesus I provoke divine help over my loved ones I prophesy to them that in this season receive the help of the Lord lift your voice and pray for your loved ones financial help spiritual help Career help. Saza sata toba shana makata. Shana makata sana makata kala koto siyata. Help, O God. Shaba katos. Shabros kete barakato shana makata. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37 and he took me in the spirit of the Lord and he took me to a valley and the Bible says that valley was full of bones and it says the bones were very dry bones don't dry up in one day it means they have been there for a long time we want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go you were born and you met that problem you have become an adult you have met that no 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 it must go that it has stayed long does not mean it's valid say in the name of jesus every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job hear the word of the lord 
hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh ministry, hear the word of the Lord. Oh business, hear the word of the Lord. Oh destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, And as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalah Kota Shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon the slain. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can burn overnight with no root. I like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desired to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desired to come to you. Have you seen a situation, Ejimi, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we're not here to waste time Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? It says, do not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. He said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just called you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just they went, please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace say no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs 
but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same it's the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is God. Are we together? I remember a few years ago, I went to a house to pray for them. I was invited and I got to the house. I usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them. And I went to the house and uh, um, I just saw the man, the, the owner of the house, the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live and i sat down i was talking with the family and the man was just looking you know you know all this do do and leave my house until by the mercies of God, God began to speak to him. At the end of it, it was him that escorted me out. He said, ah, ah, you are, you are, you know, my friend, he collected my, I said, look at this man would have missed this miracle. Brothers and sisters, some of our loved ones, you know what I'm saying, are like that. Their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years. They organize a program near your house. And they say, no, 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 no. Once it is not you, it is not God. It's an error. What of business opportunities? Just because people have been scammed here, just because something came out and something happened, they be anything business, God forbid. Don't even mention anything. Oh, sorry, dear. Sir. No, 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 no. Don't talk to me. And then you remain poor and broke and say, God, what is wrong? He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. In life, it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes. 28 of Genesis, God came to Jacob and Jacob, out of his fear and cynicism, was not ready for that visitation. The next verses would lead him to the house of Laban where he learned by his pain. By chapter 32, he was ready. The Bible says when God came again, he held him. He said, whether you are not God, I will shall hold you. It's in your holding, I will find out. I won't let you go till you bless me. He said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. And he touched his tie and blessed him. And the Bible says, then the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. For he had met with God face to face. I have seen God face to face and my life arose. And the Bible says, then the sun arose. Because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy. For as long as it is night, weeping endures. Are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny helpers Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen, a helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. 
some men came to david in a cave called adulam and they vowed that we must make you king you are seeing a man who is already weak no result ah when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved god changes the rules as if it's unfair to you Haba, there is such a dimension the helper of israel when you labor and labor and labor and labor you'll be lying to say you are giving god glory there are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality the way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when god places a demand greed has an explanation when you when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship you can't give but if it's freely you received if freely you will give are we together your destiny is one helper away by the privilege of god's grace i've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people and overnight they got jobs without interview just because i happen to know someone in a position of influence and i say sir please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken is the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of god there are pastors that need the help of god you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by god to help you will stand in the rain and say i'm sent and i'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help please hear what i'm telling you do you know if you do things alone and by yourself you are not blessed even if you succeed in doing it help help that god arises for a man and say young men established within 10 years but i have chosen promise that in one month i will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you will not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it's challenging and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of god or not i told him i said no that that is a foolish that is a foolish concern are you seeing you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list you are now seeking whether it's the will of god going behind what is there to ask whether it's the will of god or not listen i know that it looks like it's just a joke but it's a serious issue how many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help no help ask the medical doctors they will tell you you buy a car alone you look for food alone you walk alone you seek counsel by yourself you advise yourself no helper you see people moving like cane all around nobody to help nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bology do you know sometimes pastor bology would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord satire. there were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so I can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life. I should not serve God and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food. He says, since I was young, now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. You know, many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom, they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life, it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual. I can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly. Are we together? The ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occult all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said uh-huh you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw is because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father says, if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he say but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like Naaman you may be the captain of a great army the Bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life I'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present Christ well let's cry together and say God you have done well in this area and I thank you but Lord I cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the Lord in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray this is a representation of our pain it's a representation of our needs just cry to the Lord my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
Lord, there are issues here that only God can solve. Some of the issues represented here are life and death issues. We will search for you and we will find you. We will find you with all our hearts. We will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart Lord I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart and I will lift my voice to you in worship I will worship You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before God be turned now into supernatural testimonies may God turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ just give me two three minutes and we're done I want to speak over your life now when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you above all names I decree and declare over your life let a new dimension of testimonies come upon you in like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare everything that represents shame and reproach in your life I cry to the God of heaven to roll it away like smoke before the wind in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every man of God represented here fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ every issue of concern in your career in your business and in your life I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ when a man's ways pleases the Lord he make it even his enemy to be at peace with him I declare whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise I command peace to happen between you Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I want to prophesy to you. 
where you failed before go back again with an anointing go back with the grace that makes men succeed in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord visited Sarah and she called the name of her son Isaac he said all those who hear about this will laugh with me I introduce you to a new season of laughter 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 turn again our captivities like the streams of the negative I pray for you it will be like a dream of the night the way God will turn your life around anyone here under the plague of death any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy I decree oh death where is thy sting and oh grave where is thy victory I command death to pass from over you in the name of Jesus he said let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield every ground can yield I command your ground to produce for you Daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards it said but there is a God that revealed secrets I pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causes men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place I decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you I say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally I pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the Lord has made a, declare, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore I decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders I say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus hallelujah paradventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done you've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire 
and i'm saying i need jesus if you belong to any of these categories i'd like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you Koinonia, are you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not i've been around the things of god but i'm not exactly sure join them join them quickly when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were saved no in-betweens make your way quickly hallelujah i salute every one of you if you are joining them please join them very quickly overflow three you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you're not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification tonight i hand over my life to you and i receive your life in return i declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of satan is broken over my life i declare that i'm a child of god i am saved the grace to walk in victory to walk in liberty is mine now in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for we thank you for bringing these ones out no man can come to the father except you draw them lord jesus i pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom let it be supplied your people right now in the name of jesus christ i declare over your life and i decree that you are going forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ every challenge you came here with as a result of this new life let new victories come for you in jesus name i pray a big congratulations to you thank you so much now i want you to follow someone waving his hands there's a gentleman waving his hands there can i see who is waving his hands now please very quickly i'd like you to follow him all of you in concert just follow the gentleman there'll be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly let's honor them <laughs> hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you